Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. My friends, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. And every morning they are renewed. But Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also. We brought nothing into the school, my friends. And when we leave, we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We now, we now sit for the unit. Good afternoon, everyone. We often say that the hour of death cannot be forecasted. When we say this, we imagine this hour would be in a distant future. We never thought we would be thinking about Avion as a memory. Yes, it came real, real soon. It came as a shock and still feels a bit unreal. It's hard to eulogize a strong 51-year-old woman who just weeks ago seemed so happy, healthy, and full of life. But nevertheless, it is what it is. I am certain of two things, though. Avian would have wanted us all to be here today with our happiest thoughts of our time spent together. And secondly, Avian is still here with us very strongly in spirit. Avian Warwick came into this world on March 1969. There's an error on the program. She was born in March 1969. She was the eighth child of Malga Warwick and Frederick Kerr. Born to a large nuclear family, they recalled that from a tender age, her ambitions were focused and driven. She was diligent, earnest, and a hard worker. So that at the age of 14 years, she embarked on an illustrious career that would span almost four decades of yeoman service to Blue Waters Inn. In 1983, Avion started as a waitress under the tutelage of people like Miss Vassell and Miss Gemma. Her supervisors noticed that she possessed an impeccable character and unmatched traits. So she was given the task to fill in as manager of the entire hotel whenever there was an absence. She was a no-nonsense person. You had to dot every I and cross every T where her work duties were concerned. Avian was so different that she even walked with her own lunch every single day that she worked. I mean, who does that? How many of you here would walk with your own lunch and you're walking in a hotel? Be truthful. I'm not doing that, to be honest. Eh? I eat in breakfast, lunch, and it depends on what time I'm finished working, dinner, all compliments of Blue Waters in. Not Avion, though. With integrity intact, she was ultimately promoted to supervisor of the dining room staff, a job she held very close to her heart until March of this year when COVID struck. When I was writing this eulogy, I decided to speak with the co-worker I thought knew her best. Adina and Avion worked together for 32 long years. She recalled that Avion took her job extremely serious to the extent where a good tongue lashing would pass if things weren't done the Avion way which always ended up being the right way. Avian had a simple motto, you better shape up or ship out. Adina stated that Avian always led by example and never liked the passa passa and commerce thing. As a matter of fact, Avian was known for calling your name big and bold if you ever decided to test her with any bacchanal. You know I can't help but wonder what a great world it will be if people forgot about the passa passa and commerce thingy. 
Avian was such a strong person through and through, from character, personality, and presence. Avian even had the uncanny ability to translate and decode Jacintia's numerous video calls. And for those of you who don't know Jacintia, AKA Mumu, she's deaf and dumb, but well in tune with the current happenings in space and beyond. Everyone wondered how Avian did it, every single day for hours on end. But Avian was an all-rounder, and in 2003, precisely 17 years ago, in the state of New York, Andy Orr decided to bat in her crease, scoring a perfect six runs. Avion was Andy's best friend, his confidant, his wife, his lover, and his traveling companion, <laughs> among many other things. From this union, two beautiful children were produced. Dante and Disha. Avion loved her children unconditionally, always there for pickups and drop-offs, for PTA meetings, sporting events, and just events that mattered to her children on a whole. The bond that Avion and her son Dante shared was unmatched. He was her riding partner. Disha stated that her mommy's smile was always so radiant, that she loved to cook and bake in fact, I heard that she was a rum punch boss and punch a cream specialist. Avion also normalized luxury in her life. In other words, she loved big life. She would purchase the most expensive things and then quote, cheap thing no good and good thing no cheap. She, would, she loved champagne and cheesecake and she loved her family, her siblings, all of them. Her family was huge. Plenty nieces and nephews and great nieces and great nephews and cousins. Her affinity towards all of them knew no bounds. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are all here because somewhere Avion have been touched. Some persons in this crowd have been touched by Avion. We cannot know for certain how long we have here we cannot foresee the trials or misfortunes that will test us along the way. We cannot know God's plan for us. What we can do is to live our lives as best as we can with purpose and love and joy. We can use each day to store those who are closest to us, to show, sorry, those who are closest to us, how much we care about them, and not only when they are dead, and treat others with the kindness and respect that we wish those who are closest to us would show. We can learn from our mistakes and grow from our failures, and we can strive at all costs to make a better world so that someday, if we are blessed with the chance to look back on our time here on this earth, we can know that we spent it well, that we made a difference, that our fleeting presence had a lasting impact on the lives of other human beings. As you know so well, the passage of time never really heals the tragic memory of such a great loss. But we carry on because we have to, because our loved one would want us to carry on, and because there's still a light that guides us in this world from the love that she gave us. We must carry on, ladies and gentlemen. Avrion Warwick has gone home now, guided by her faith and by the light of those she have loved and lost. At last, she's with them once more, leaving those of us who grieve her passing with the memory she gave and the good she did. So Avion, we bid you farewell to your physical body. We bid you farewell, as we know that you will forever be in spirit. Till we meet again, beautiful soul, rest in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Christian friends. Um, we're standing here representing Delaford Anglican School. I had the privilege of knowing Avion. I remember when they decided to transfer their children and they came to me and he said, I want to transfer them children. You think all you're gonna be able to accept them in all the school? I said, there's no problem with that. I'll speak to the principal. Time went by, it didn't happen. 
And then he came again. I said, but I spoke to you a long time ago. So what is the key back? He did come. And I was privileged to have in my class one of the most polite young lady by the name of Disha. The mother was so committed, respectful, devoted, always coming with a smile. I am seeing the smile as Avion comes, she will politely say, good morning, Miss George. Disha doing her work. What about Dante? And when she cannot come, she will send Elizabeth, her young sister, to the meeting. They were always represented. I was fortunate to be the sports teacher of the school. And I decided that I reward the children who did well. So I wanted some folks to sponsor. So I went to Andy and I spoke to him. I said, I'm looking for some sponsors in the village so that I could reward these children who do the school and proud. And every year, Andy and his wife would support me by putting their hand in their pocket to give me money to buy tokens for these children. And I want to applaud them. She was so, so loving. I want to share two examples. One day, she's always there to pick up a child. My grandson started school and I was not at school. So they sent him up with her. But because she's accustomed just doing minding her own business, she drove past the entrance. As she drove past my grandson, ball out her. You're trying to kidnap me, over. You kidnapped me. Not me house right here. She said she was sorry she brought him back. The next day, the humble avion came to me. She said, Miss George, I didn't mean it, you know. I didn't mean anything, your grandson. I said, Avian, it's okay. The next day again, she come back. She said, like, you wouldn't forget, Miss George, but I really didn't mean anything. Such was the humility of Avian. Another young man said to me, when I was courting, Avian gave me an advice. She said, try on your shoe. So I said to her, man, a Christian girl, you know. He said, Christian girl, you know, try on your shoe and make sure you fit. Because when you're married, you can't take them out. That was the worthy advice of Avion. And today we want to thank God for Avion touching our lives and for the part she played. Disha and Dante, I am no more in school, but I'm in the village. I will always be there for you all. Not idle words, but sincerity. Call me when you need me. We love you, and we will always be there for you. And I want to, I want to applaud Avian's family. I want to tell you today, I have seen so many funerals where families say they will stay together and they will help each other. And after the funeral, there is basa basa, there is torn apart. For Jesus' sake, I am applauding you all. I am exhorting you. Please stay together for these two children. Too many children in our society are torn by social issue that is affecting their learning. So you stand in the gap. We don't know how, we don't know when. God has a plan for everyone. We just have to trust him, even when we cannot trust him. And the, and the Warwick family, friends, today I cannot tell you anything that will comfort you, but I give you Jesus. Because he knows, he understands, and he feels. Brothers and sisters, I want to, on behalf of myself, principal, and staff, students, parents of Dolphin Anakin School, to extend our sincerest condolences to Andy, Disha, Dante, and the extended family. Just want to echo what Mrs. George would have said, and evident in the picture, Avian was always at Dolphin Anakin School. I had the privilege to teach Dante, and uh, there was not a time that I would call her, even when I don't, didn't call her, that she would be present. So I just want to say she, it's, a, it's a great loss. Wednesday morning, Mrs. George, the person who broke the news to me, and I just had to head up to Speyside to really be part of the morning and the comforting. 
So let me just say, Andy, you know you have on dying support. Just call. I'm just a phone call away. We're just a phone call away. It's just a call. Okay? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Avian's friend of 25 years, at least. I just want to say that 25 years ago, I met this woman, and I met this woman with this most beautiful smile. That's the first thing I noticed about her. She had this most amazing smile. It was a smile like the, the sun that covers the beautiful waters of Tobago. And and that, that was the first thing that drew me to her. But when I got to know her a little bit more and a little bit more, I realized that her heart was even brighter than the sun. She had a heart that was as deep as it was wide. This space I waters is nothing compared to the heart that Avian had. And we became fast friends. But she, wasn't, she, didn't, she didn't just become my friend, she became my sister. Avian was my sister. She was my sister in love, and she was my sister in Christ. And if I had, when she saw me, she would run to me like a child, throw her arms around me. She didn't just think love. She lived love. She gave love. And if there was one word that I would use to describe Avian, it would be extraordinary. And she was extraordinary because, because of how she loved her God, because of how she loved her Jesus. She loved him with all her heart, all her mind, all her soul, all her strength, all her spirit. She loved him with everything. And that love that she had for him gave her an amazing grace to love us all the same way. She loved Andy with all her heart, all her mind, all her soul, all her strength. She loved her children with all her heart, her mind, her soul, her strength. And she loved me like that. And she loved all of you like that. That's why we are all here today to pay tribute to a soul that loved as beautifully and as strenuously and as purely as any soul could love. So, she wasn't here in vain. She was here to teach us love. She was here to love us. She was here to be a little Jesus in all our lives. And I was describing her to a friend of mine who had never met her. I just want to say, I just want to add to that, that she loved God as we should all love God. She gave us that example to love God as he deserved to be loved. And in loving God, we love one another as God wants us to love one another. And that is what Avian left us, the legacy of love. So it was nothing for me to get on a plane from Trinidad, to get to Tobago, to get to this funeral today. It was the smallest thing that I could ever have done because what she gave and what she has given is far more than than, than words can ever. I was sitting down coming on that plane. I was saying, what am I to say? How am I to pay tribute to a woman who, was, who had so much, who gave so much? Words are not sufficient. But let us remember the one thing about her, how beautifully and completely she loved her God and how beautifully and completely she loved us. And I was describing her to a friend of mine who's a beautiful poet. And I think it touched her heart so much that she who had never met Avian wrote these words and I want to share these words with you all today. Fly beautiful angel, fly. You're free from earthly strife. We have your smile, the way you laughed at life. We feel your hugs, your love, your sharing, giving soul. You are our friend, a good wife, Fulfill per perfectly your motherhood role. So fly, generous angel, fly. In heaven, that wonderful spirit will greet friends with love and care. You will give of beautiful yourself, just like you did here. Fly, sweet Avian, fly. But we cannot say goodbye. Rest in peace, beautiful Avian. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. 
I want to share just three things. The first thing is, you know, I consider myself a big man at age 35. And if, as a big man at age 35, I felt and still feel the way I do about the loss of a mother, I could only imagine what two young children who are not yet adults will feel. And uh, I want to join with the others before me in saying that our priority as a village must now be those two young ones who have not yet lived. The, the second thing I wish to share is that Avion spent 37 years at Blue Waters Inn. And people tend to rave about Blue Waters Inn and you know how nice and idyllic the place is. But you know what makes Blue Waters Inn successful? The staff. And uh, as a villager, as a representative for the area sometimes, I feel as if Blue Waters Inn doesn't even appreciate the quality staff that it has. I have, I have sent several people to Blue Waters Inn and they will always come back with positive review, reviews about the staff and people like Avion. And as the eulogist said, not commissive. You could go up Blue Waters in with any kind of guests and you guarantee the village ain't gonna know who you're carrying Blue Waters in. That's professionalism. And Avion served with dignity. You, you, you see, we tend to think sometimes that service is servitude. But it's when you serve people and you serve people well, you will impact lives in a positive way. In the same way uh, the good lady spoke about a while ago, she just met Avion through Blue Waters in as a guest and her life was impacted. And that's a lesson for everybody here. Whatever God calls you to do, do it with the best of your ability. Even if God God's call to you is to just sweep and clean the road and morning time come. Go and sweep and clean the road to the best of your ability. Let all of heaven smile long at how well you clean the road. That's what good service is about. An honest day's work for an honest day's pay. So serve with a smile. And the third thing I want to say to you, Avion is dead, so Avion cannot hear me. But you see, for us who live in this village, this is what death number seven that we're on. Number seven in, in the space of, a, of for two months, in a short, short time. At one point, we had we were burying what, two and three in one week, in one seven day period. Let this be a reminder of how fickle life is. And sometimes we, we spend time on the things that don't count. And I know in this season, Plenty of you all going to spend time on things that do not count. And you think that what counts is whether I could have a better car than the neighbor, my house paint and look better than the neighbor or bigger than the neighbor, and how much more I have than the neighbor. Those things are not really important when at the end of the day, because life is this fickle. I did not even know Avion was sick to the point that she would die a few meters from where I live. That's to tell you how life is. So if your shot is to be called in the morning, you ready? You organize yourself, you live a life in a way that people could come here and speak genuinely good about your life, or we got to come up here and make up lies about you. Or find one good thing about you and say it over and over again. Live life as if it is the last. Make beautiful memories. Treat each other well. After you leave the service today, find a neighbor you stop talk to for donkey years and talk to the neighbor. Call out to the neighbor, pray for each other, share with each other, because you never know when your time will come. And we have had plenty of reminders in Speyside over the last two months of how fickle life is. So let me live a life that's pleasing to God and hopefully whenever our shot is called, we will just go to sleep hoping to wake up on that great judgment morning. Thank you.
Condolences and deepest sympathies goes out to the family of Avion. I am Sonia Whitlock, manager of Bellows when I hope to be home. And we just want to say how much we love you, how much we appreciate you, especially during this time. We declare the peace of God, the comfort of God during this time of grief. I can vividly remember it was at Tash uh, celebration service that I led the song service and Erin, her husband, would have been there and he would have advised that Avion loved that song, Hear My Cry, O oh Lord, it would have touched her, like her heart. And so this is the request for Avion today but more so, it would be more sweet, it would be more melodious if you join in with me as we stand and lift up songs of praises unto Jehovah God. Hear my cry, musician.
my soul. It is well with my soul. When peace, when peace, like a river, a
The first lesson is taken from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. The Sovereign Lord has filled me with His Spirit. He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to captives and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people and defeat enemies. He has sent me to comfort all who mourn, to give to those who mourn in Zion joy and gladness instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. They will be like trees that the Lord himself has planted. They will, they will all do what is right, and God will be praised for what he has done. This is the end of the first lesson. You know, the Psalm, Psalm 23, Psalm 23, to the tune of Krimo.
be with you. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that, where, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going? But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? But Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. My friends, this is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, Praise to Christ our Lord. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. While preparing for today, there's one thing that came to my mind preparing for this service, and it is victory belongs to God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, my condolences to the bereaved family, friends, relatives, and associates of Miss Avion from the entire Anglican community in Trinidad and Tobago, and especially in our community here in Speyside and Environs. We have truly lost a member in our community. But my friends, God has gained his daughter. We have a saying that is often misunderstood by us, which is, give respect where respect is due. That is something we like to say over and over and over, but do we fully understand what that is? I believe today, my friends, that what deserves full respect today is debt. We must give debt all the respect that we have because debt is no respecter of age, of time, of season, of race, of color, of anything. So debt deserves our respect. And today in this church, we celebrate the life of Miss Avion. We have the perfect opportunity to take stock of our lives. And I am saying to you here today to make peace with your maker. Because death is no respecter of anything. And additionally, it is hard. This time in the year is very hard to lose our friend our wife, our mother, our cousin, our associate, whatever she was to you, this is a hard time. Because we, in the church's life, we call it Advent. And Advent is where we prepare for the coming of Christ. But while some are preparing for God, for Christ to come or to return, others have just lost someone. And then we're preparing for Christmas as well, where Christmas is, is a season where we decorate, we paint, we buy all these kind of things. Christmas is where we prepare ourselves for when others come into our house. But Christmas is also a time, just like today, where we need to take stock of what we're preparing or who we're preparing to come into our lives. Because are we cleaning up for human beings? or are we cleaning up for God? But the question I ask you today is when this time, like today, arrives, would we be ready? For we all have been asked, for we all have asked for so many things in life. We ask for house, car, money. Some of, us, some of us ask for a good woman or a good man. And we get it, but do we say thanks? And some of us who haven't received what we want as yet, are we ready to receive it? We ask for a house, 
ya dua hari ulang ya ask for a car way park in it we ask for somebody else in our life but we are even ready for ourselves so I'm asking you today are we ready for when God comes in our life and even though we might not be ready we are still blessed my friends because God doesn't over only favor me uh, well, I hope God favor me, but he favors all of us, my friends. The fact that we are here to see another day means that God favors you. The fact that we have a roof over our head, something to eat, a little something to wear, it might, might be so nice, but it's something that God blesses us with. Some of us take the simplest things in life for granted. Some of us take time that we have with one another for granted. Some of us even think that persons are working against us. We think people fighting us down in life. Things are not going our way or the way that you want it to go. But my friends, God's way is always right. It might be how we want it. But it, is, but it is always in God's time. I say again, my friends, victory belongs to God. We are just the inheritors or the, bene, or the benefactors of God's love for us. And as I said, Jesus doesn't only favor you, but he favors our sister that we are celebrating today. Not because of who we are, but who God is. And we cannot give God nothing. You could try how much you want. We can't give God nothing. What else he wants from us but his love? We cannot give God anything because he has everything. All we can do is honor God praise him, and in times like these, remember how blessed we are, my friends. I know Miss Avian was very young. I think somebody said 50, 50 something. 51. And in our community, as our brother said, in Speyside, there's a lot, a lot of death in the community so far. And I hope that nobody say, as soon as I come, everybody choosing to die. I hope all of those say that. Eh? But I want this to be the last for the year. Make this the last. If it's, now, I don't know God's timing, as I said. But don't call me again. Eh? I can't take it. The community has had enough. And this is why I urge you, for the time that we have, cherish it, my friends. Cherish it as much as you can. So my friends, in this time that we have, when we need to seek, we need to seek some sort of comfort, some anything to get us, to get us past this period in our lives. And I urge you, to seek comfort in the Holy Spirit. Seek comfort in the Holy Spirit. Because that is the only comfort we can have in this time of mourning, in this time of sorrow, in this time of pain. We will be sad. I'm not telling all that be sad. Because it is a part of life. But when that sadness and that, and that mourning period is about to end, is only we could only give thanks. We can only give thanks for God giving us that experience. And all these experiences, my friends, are supposed to draw us closer and closer to Christ. And while we are here on earth, my brothers and sisters, as I urge you again, cherish the people in your life. Every minute, every second, I ain't saying they will always be good enough. 
I just give my sister trouble sometimes too. She just look fit. How you can leave your food with all that chicken on your plate and expect me to leave it alone? So I just give my sister trouble. But she just give me back. She just say, well, you leave yours too. So we remember good times, my friends, but we also need to prepare ourselves for bad times. And times like these, because it's not always the case that people will treat us so good in life. Eh? It's not always. And don't be naive as well. But we have a chance to repent each and every day. When we wake up in the morning, we give God thanks and we need to move on from certain troubles in our lives. Because sometimes we like to quarrel with one another we fighting down one another, and we're not forgiving each other. How is not forgiving going to help us get to heaven? We're not forgiving for the simplest, simplest things. And what about on a day like today? Because we don't know when our number is called. We don't know when our time to meet our maker would be. And would you be ready to go into heaven. Because if you're not ready, well, you might make it there. You might make it there. And as I like to say, I want to be there. And I want to meet someone there too. And the Old Testament reading that we heard this morning, well, we heard a little while ago, Isaiah 61, it says that we are supposed to bring good news to the oppressed. I don't know if you all heard that earlier. Bring good news to the poor. Tell the prisoners that they are prisoners no more. Tell blind people that they could see and set the captives free. I think there's a song as well. And when we take stock of our lives today in a day like today where we are mourning our sister Avion, how many of us have done that to our neighbors and our friends? How many of us are willing to heal those who need healing? How many of us are willing to help those who need helping? How many of us are even willing to give a listening ear? Something that Jesus would have done. And we're trying to go to heaven, because as I said, we don't know when our time will be. But yesterday, we didn't listen to our friend when he called us on the phone. And he just needed a listening ear. You know the fellow out the road that he was hungry and a lot throwing away the food and a lot of fridge? I ain't sung so bad yet, right? Not yet. And don't wait for me outside. I'm too small. I can't take lash. Eh? But we cannot wait until it's too late, my friends. Do not wait until it's too late. Don't wait until the time has passed to try to repent for your sins. Because we do not have all the time in the world. It's like trying to put on your clothes all at once. You're trying to put on your jersey. Let, let me not talk for women. There are more clothes to put on than men. You're trying to put on a vest, a jersey, a pants, your socks, and your shoes at the same time when you realize, well, this might be the last. And you know you have all this time at the present to go and take out a vest and choose which vest you want. You have all this time right now to, to, to see which jersey you want, iron a jersey, put it back in the wardrobe, choose our next jersey. But when our time is coming closer, something is about to happen, this is when we want to try and put everything on at the same time. How is that going to work out? I want to challenge somebody to try and send me the video and see how that's going to work out. And that is the period that we have in this time right now where we could take stock of our lives, forgive our friends, help our neighbors, and make our way sure to heaven. Not at the last hour when we try, you want to run by everybody to ask for forgiveness. It ain't going to work out, my friends, because death is no respecter. So my friends, while we are waiting for Christ to come again, and that is what Christmas period is about, when we await the coming of Christ. 
Christ says that he has gone to prepare a place for us. He didn't go to prepare a physical place, my friends, but a spiritual dwelling, a heavenly dwelling. According to the gospel, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And I tell you, this place is not really a bad place. It's a place that we might enjoy, but you can only enjoy it if you do the things on earth that is fitting to go to heaven. And this place that, God has, that Jesus Christ has gone to prepare for us, my friends, is a place where it don't have no more sadness. All crying will be over. All the hurt and pain and troubles in this world is gone. Nobody can come and trouble you again. That place, my friends, is in heaven. But Jesus Christ also said that he will come again. And when he comes again, he's not coming to sit down on your couch for Christmas. That is not the dwelling that he is coming. He's coming for a spiritual dwelling. And he's coming in ourselves, in our hearts, my friends. So we need to also clean our hearts. Just as we clean in the house, and all somebody going tomorrow to buy that burger paint, what about your spiritual self? What about your hearts? Are we cleaning our hearts, our minds, and our souls? Are we preparing ourselves for when Christ comes again? And cleaning yourself, as I said, is not only doing physical acts, but it's that spiritual acts as well. Getting closer to God, knowing your maker, knowing who he is. So my friends, as we remember and celebrate the life of our sister, I pray that we heed the words of the scripture from Ephesians, which says, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power and the spirit, my friends. That you may be strengthened with the Holy Spirit. That Christ may dwell in you, in your hearts, through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. My friends, I hope that we can cultivate some sort of love in our hearts as we remember our sister. For she was a good friend, she was a good relative, she was a good associate. From what I heard, she brought cheer to those around us, some sort of joy around us. And this is what we need to cultivate in our lives. For as I said, death teaches us many things, but it also teaches us how we should live in our earthly lives, my friends. For greater is he that is in me, that is in the world. So continue to have Christ in you, Continue to have Christ as your comforter. For it's better to have Christ in us than to have something else in us. I know what that might be. But better Christ be in you. And as we remember and as we mourn for our sister, seek the comfort of the Holy Spirit, my friends. Let us seek comfort from our friends, our family, and our relatives who are seeking that comfort from Christ again. Let us surround ourselves with people who want to see Christ on their last day as well. So my friends, when we turn, when it's our turn to meet our maker, we would have done all that is right. We would have prepared a place in our hearts. We would have done our earthly duty to our neighbors so that when Christ comes again, he will find a place worthy to carry us to him. Amen. I now invite you all to stand as we affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. For he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For intercession prayers, our response will be, Hear us, Lord. For our sister, let us pray to the Lord Christ, who said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Avion and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in your sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead, you raise the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promise paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at your table in your heavenly kingdom. And finally, give us in our sorrows at the death. Give comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Abia. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Hear us, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Avia, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth we shall return. For so did you again when you created me, saying, You are the dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, that even at the grave we make our song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Give rest to Christ, you have served with your sins, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Avion to the mercy of God, our Lake and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, Avion. O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond that she may rest, so that she may rest with all your sins in the eternal habitation. When we are with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Abia. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeemer. Receive her into your arms of mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. My friends, let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. We now process and go. 
The interment could be at the space side cemetery. Public cemetery. Public cemetery.